As time went on, the rift between our community became really, really ugly. And some people who chose to go to the media and so on and so forth, really, I mean, my wife and I were just talking about it. The rift is not, it's still very solid. And as I was looking at this and feeling really like this is at a very bad impasse, I went back to my blog and I grabbed every blog posting I had done about Nancy's murder over the time, because it was also cathartic for me, and I put it into this really cool little program called Wordle, W-O-R-D-L-E. And all Wordle is, is it's a tag cloud generator. And it generated this cloud. Now, what does the computer say is the most important thing? Nancy. So I put up a blog post, and I said, hello, McFly. If I can take all this content, put it into a computer, that has no emotion, and have it generate a tag cloud for me, what do you think we should all be focusing on right now? Her dad wrote me a note from Canada that night and said, thank you. What are you doing to use this technology to drive collective action in a more effective manner? The kids are already doing it. So our choice is either to jump in or become disintermediated. So we're moving from stocks of information and content to flows of knowledge. And, and my hypothesis is, in the new world, if, you, if you're a big John Silly Brown fan, information is a new currency. People are the transport mechanism. We carry that stuff around with us. Conversation is the transfer mechanism. And insight is the outcome. And that's the new flywheel that the Taoiseach was talking about. That's the new thing that generates growth. You cannot shrink your way to growth. I recognize that we're in an economic recession, but there are no companies that I'm aware of, particularly in the technology field, who have ever survived coming out of a recession by not betting the farm during it. The reason for that, technology is counter-cyclical, and if you don't have something new that comes out on the other end, you're dead. So if we buy into the fact that information is currency, people are the transport mechanism, conversation is the transfer mechanism, and insight is the outcome, insight that generates new ideas for growth, to pull us out of this recession, should that, that should fundamentally change your learning strategy. And I would submit some of the technologies Johnny's going to show you later fit this model very, very well. I'm going to move on to the internet and uh, just to give you a little taste of where things are going, and, and then we're going to come back to some actions. How many of you ever saw the movie Tron? Okay, so the internet is all about going into the web. So just bear with me as you kind of see what it was like for Jeff Bridges from Tron. I just finished an 18-month study for IBM look, following these kids around. Games are tough. Games are very cognitively challenging. I'm not talking about one-person shooters. I'm talking about massively multiplayer online role-playing games are incredibly challenging. Um, so I think we can learn a lot. So, so we're moving from the internet to the internet. The internet is going 3D. Uh, and it's, it, it's definitely going to be within the next 5,000 days. I have no doubt about that. How quick, I'm not sure. The one thing I do know, as somebody who's studied technology for 20 years, is I'm becoming increasingly poor at judging how fast things happen. In other words, my, my projections, as optimistic as I think they are, are normally way off. They, it, it happens faster. So how many of you have a Second Life avatar? Okay, how many of you uh, spend more than two hours inside of Second Life. Okay. How many of you either have a World of Warcraft, EVE Online, any kind of massively multiplayer online role-playing game persona? Okay. And how often, may I ask? Yeah, how many? A couple hours, okay. So you're, you're not a heavy user? No. All right. It's almost like drug talk. You're not a heavy user, right? The, the, average, the average user in World of Warcraft is about 20 hours. Nine million people in World of Warcraft, 20 hours a week, do the math. That's like, you know, the way I got the money for the research is I went to the, the, the uh, head of technology for IBM and I said, basically, there is seven IBMs worth of work going on inside this world right now, and it just started six months ago. Don't you think we should go figure it out? And, and the woman, Tammy Johns from Rampart, goes, yeah, I want to go figure that out. Because you know what? You're aggregating ergs. And these people are they're hiring people, they're firing people, they're making remuneration decisions, they're figuring out strategy, they're wanting to understand how to get through some pretty complex tasks. And I have a whole article um, I think I'll talk about in a minute. For those of you who haven't seen Second Life, uh, here's a one minute um, overview.
That's an avatar, which is a digital representation of yourself. The model itself is built on a, on a geographic context. So each area there is a piece of real estate. Right now it's five times the size of Boston, 14 million residents. Lots of people are building out different environments. The user-generated content in here, you can build your own environments. That's Dartmouth College, for instance. That's uh, Bono from U2 at this conf These people paid to be at this con concert, and the money went to the U Foundation, uh, to the One Foundation. Um, they all held up their cell phones at the end and kind of hugged and stuff. There are certain technologies, there are certain things that happen with emerging technologies that you know it's going to take off. Uh, one is gambling, and the other I'll leave for your imagination. Um, but that's essentially, that's essentially what it is. And, and the, other, the last thing is, is, is there's no physics in this space. So if you want to fly around, you can. So basically what it is is the internet becomes 3D, and your avatar is inside that environment. And now, what's Im if content is king, what's important? Context becomes the kingdom. This is the kingdom, or one of them. I'm not advocating second life. I'm just saying 3D avatar-mediated contexts are going to become the next engine for learning. And, and wrapped around in that is social media. I mean, MySpace is called MySpace for a reason. It's not my page, right? It's going to go 3D very, very soon. And then all the kids will have their space and their crib and their bling and reputational capital. All that stuff is very, very important to that generation. Games are a little bit different, and I... I did a Harvard Business Review with two colleagues, uh, Tom Malone from MIT and um, Byron Reeves from Stanford. Byron's a psychologist. Tom is a well-known uh, business scholar. Um, and this is what we started. The, the reason we did this research is we got paid because we said, look, what's the future of enterprise? What will a company look like 50 years from now? Will there still be multinationals? Will companies shrink? Will they be connected through the web and they'll just specialize, like Gary Hamill would suggest? Or will they continue to be monolithic holding companies like GE is? Where is it going to go? And so what we did was we said, well, the future is already here, just not evenly distributed. Uh, is there anywhere that has the characteristics of what we think the future of enterprise might look like? Open, global, virtual, digitally mediated, knowledge-driven, volunteer workforce were kind of our criteria. And guess what we stumbled upon? Massively multiplayer online role-playing games. So let me show you some kids playing games, and then I'll talk a little bit about this research. And so it goes on. So one thing to, to, to make clear is virtual social worlds like Second Life are very different than World of Warcraft. Uh, they're the same, they're kin but not twins. In the middle, you have to have an avatar. It's a persistent world that means you can show up and leave, but the world is always there. There's reputation, um, which means that you have some way to get attribution. Uh, it's immersive, it's interactive, it's real time. There's a virtual economy and there's digital assets. On the virtual social world side, it's more like a 3D MySpace. It's about interaction and collaboration. On the MMO side, it's more about entertainment or edutainment. Because, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing these two come together. And I think there's a lot we can learn from the massively multiplayer side in terms of creating teachable moments. So, so this is where I'm spending a fair amount of time is trying to understand how can you get 9 million people into a game where they're spending 20 hours a week and don't want to leave, but Johnny can't pay attention in class. What can we do about that, right? And I would submit to you, by the way, uh, this is not something you need to worry about later. In the United States, 7 million managers are avid gamers. Th this is, the average age is 32. Okay, this is not 17-year-old spotty face males. This, this is your people, your younger people, male and female, 42% female in MMORPGs, okay? Thank you.